Thank you very much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. More on that a little later. Ooh, I can't even see the display because you guys are that far back. So, hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kelly Ellen and welcome to, I don't know what the hell we're doing. I don't know, I had a plan for today's video and I put some plans aside and I just got in today, I was here yesterday, and I got in today and I just looked and went, Meh. I don't want to do that. So I'm deciding to do something slightly different. So I have two things to do today. One, you, you're not going to be very happy about this, but I mean, I'm not either, don't get me wrong. This guy, can you see this guy? This is what I like to call handlebar boy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is my beautiful Anthurium waraquinum, but he, he doesn't grow normal. He doesn't grow normal. So his lobes here are always separated like this, like peace and he's continuously like that that's all he ever does so he's steadily got worse and worse now i've got you've got to believe me when i tell you there's nothing on the back of this leaf this is an immaculate leaf and yet he's going a little bit he's not doing well he had more leaves and they're just dropping off so i guess the first half of this video will be diagnosing what's wrong with this guy because i haven't even looked in here yet I suspect he has root rot and I suspect he was underwatered. I suspect he was underwatered first and then he's got root rot. So that is what I think is happening here. Depending on what he looks like, I might propagate him. I might propagate him and grow him back because he's very, very special. I haven't really heard of other people having basically, not this type, but this mutation up here. And I know he is much loved on the channel. So I think the first thing we'll probably do is that. After that, I pulled this guy down from upstairs. This is shameful. This is, this is shameful. Like this is very unbecoming of someone that runs a plant channel, but I have no shame in telling you this guy's been neglected. He should have been repotted a long time ago. And as you can see, he's grown a bit nasty. This is not very nice. This is a philodendron golden dragon narrow form. So he looks like a golden dragon. You might be able to see here. Apologies, guys. I cannot zoom in. You are miles away. He's basically narrow. That's that's the tea with that. It is that simple. He shouldn't look like this at all. But alas, he does. So the second thing I want to do is essentially just propagate him and start him off again. Get a few of him. Get him going. Because I've got some great aerials here. The bottom ones are a bit cooked. They'll probably need chopped off but the top ones are nice and fresh. So we'll get going on him afterwards. I'm gonna put him down. And I think the first thing we will do is we will diagnose an anthurium because it's funny actually, because when I was looking for the questions for this video around about five minutes ago, I noticed a lot of you were like, oh, can you propagate anthurium? Can you do some with anthurium? Um, we don't see you with anthurium enough on repots. And that is, that's fair assessment guys. So by pure chance, this was one of the things I had picked up to do today. So we're going to do it. Sorry, I'm just literally getting rid of water because I lay that plant horizontally. I've wet the table basically with water, so I'm just sort of viping it a little bit. I don't have a system for this. I have down here, you can't see it, I've got a bucket of pond, which is what that anthurium is in. I think we're just going to empty it all out, put it in there, and we'll repot him with it, and we're going to decide what we want to do based on what he looks like. So if that sounds like something that remotely interests you, then uh, keep on watching. And we'll chat some shit as well, shall we? So if I just pull it by this, it should come out nice and simple. Yes, it does. And I don't know why I bothered wiping the table because I'm going to get water all over the table again. That water is, uh, could be better, to be honest. Right, let's put that down. First things first, we have to somehow get this out of here. Do I want to just take it out as is? I feel like it might reduce the chance of this snapping if I keep it on this little pole. And we will get through your questions this week that you asked me. So the first thing people asked was the feed update. Oh my God, so many people have asked me about the feed. So the main questions were, when is it coming? Please, it's coming, it, tell me it's soon. So essentially, guys, I've had to go back and forth with the labeling. I may have mentioned this a few times. Oh, it's weighing on me. Two seconds. There's no easy way of doing this, you know. It might look bad and, and that's because it is. Right, there we go. Yeah, that, that's a mess. Essentially, we've had to go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards with the label. I'm making this label for myself, right? I have not hired a company to help me with this label. The only thing I'm doing is I'm liaising with my producer of the feed and working to get the right, how, how can you say it? Fill the right regulations, make sure the right words are literally in the right places. I won't bore you, but like when you have a label, the hazard symbol has to be a certain size, it has to be in a certain place. You must say the following things. You can't say these things near these things and all of that. So I've probably been producing this label now for the best part of a year. It kind of slowed down over summer because it got to the point where we were late on it and I didn't want to release the feed in winter. So I thought, well, let's just leave it a bit. So we're now kind of frantically trying to get that finished. I think I've sent off 
What I hope is literally the final iteration of the label because I thought it was final about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. It wasn't, it was still wrong. So I'm kind of hoping now it's decent and it's it's good you feel me once that happens and we get it approved we need certain certificates to go along with it so you know it does have these things in the feed gets tested we're okay for sale blah 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 blah. the packaging is up to standards it's all legal and everything else and we should be able to go into actually producing the labels i say labels i can't really give too much details away but produce the packaging for it anyway because it's not a stick on label on the packaging. The label kind of is the packaging. So it's sort of all one unit. So basically I can't go into production till the label's final. It's not like I can produce the, the volume and then just wait, stick labels on it. It's not going to work like that. You'll see what I mean when it releases. So we're just kind of doing that. There will be a few weeks on production of those. The production of the feed doesn't take long because it's essentially a giant recipe that needs created. So that's a matter of. I don't know, it's definitely inside two weeks for that. And the production of the packaging is about 12 weeks. We might be able to get it down to eight weeks. We're sort of looking into it. So it should be on track for late spring, which is not what I would like, but it is what it is. And it should be getting released. You will know all the things when I can give you the info. Right, I'm going to take this away. All it is is pawn like that, and I'm just gonna have a little look at what's going on with this plant. I am gonna do my best, guys, not to actually pull on this leaf, but it is what it is. I don't even know if you can see it if I do that. There we go. Just wanna see what's going on with it. And honestly, funny enough, this isn't ideal because I've got gloves on, but I can't really see too much of a problem. I can see what I like to call white rot, which is basically the roots are rotting, but they haven't gone dark and nasty and they don't stink. They're still, they look like root. So I call it white rot. I guess it's just really just earlier in the process of rotting. Make any sense? So we have a little bit of that, but it's very fresh. And I mean, it's very, very fresh. And it is the roots that are literally probably just pushing into the water at the bottom of this, this reservoir, because it's a self-watering plant pot. I have some gunge here, but it's old substrate, surprisingly, that's come from the supplier. I didn't realize that was still in there. That's quite shameful. So we have some of that, but honestly, it's not that bad. It's kind of wild though that these roots are very, quite hair-like for an anthurium. I never really noticed that before with queens. Because when I get queens in, my queen anthurium model, yes, I do propagate them, but a lot of it is more of like an import rehab cell model because you, just, you don't want to fuck with a queen anthurium, you know what I mean? You just don't. I've learned the hard way. So I tend to keep them in for a good three months to get good growth and sell them out. And I do what most sellers do and I sell them with one good leaf because... I'm just not, I'm not amazing with them at all. And we've been through this before on videos. You either click with them or you don't, or you can sort of get away with it. And I keep them for a while. I get nice growth out of them and then they go on. I think I've got some, oh, you can't even see it. It's back there. Um, I've got some with some nice new leaves on and some of them are just horrific old leaves. But that's what I tend to do. So I tend to not really look at the roots of a queen anthurium really. This is quite, this is quite hair-like compared to what you'd think it would be, to be honest. We'll just have a little look, but I can't, like, I can't sit here and say these are bad roots because they're all right. They're, like I say, there's a tiny bit of rot, but it's not, it's not bad at all. It's really not bad. And it's, we're talking like the last inch of some of the roots, not every root, just the really long ones. Like all of this is fine. So while I would have said that was the problem with this plant, I don't know if it was. It could just be chronic underwatering. Like I say, guys, there is just, there's nothing on here. There's no spider mites. There's no leaf miners, there's no thrips, there's no mealy. It's just, it just hates its life. And I can't really see a reason as to why. Again, yes, a little bit of damage, but it's not, it's not enough to cause this. It's not enough to cause all the leaves to drop off. And don't get me wrong, guys. I'm sure you've had this at home a lot and you're like, oh, what is wrong with it? <laughs> what is wrong with it? And you either disturb the plant and find out or you don't and sometimes when you disturb the plant you try to find out you still can't find out and i genuinely didn't know what we would find today as you know if you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website you should give squarespace a try squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates they're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time i've used squarespace now for well over a year for the red plant shop and it's working really really well for me no matter what squarespace template you go for it's really really easy to add new sections that still fall within your 
design choice. It's all laid out in categories depending on what you want, and it all blends seamlessly with the rest of your website, so you don't even need to worry about the design once you've chosen the theme that you would like. It's all just going to work seamlessly. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from voiceover me. Back to the video. I'm not going to say any rot is causing this at the moment. I'm actually more at the moment leaning towards underwatering, but not underwatering enough to basically kill it and rot the root, just an underwatering enough to cause a bit of a problem. But there's not really anything going on. If you don't know what the conditions are like upstairs in the studio where this grows, it's really dry. Things do get underwatered, even though they're in self-watering. If I didn't put a plant up there that was in self-watering, it would die. It would die, it can't handle it. Even now the sun is shining in there and everything probably needs a water despite being watered four days ago because it is so, so warm in there. So that's generally the tea up there. But honestly, this has done quite well, I would say. I don't really wanna screw with these roots, to be honest. I just need to decide what I want to do here. I just think since we're at this point, he is the only one because I don't know any others that are really doing this. I think it might be time to propagate him. I, I really do. He's got some nice aerials here. I think it could be cool to maybe put the base back in the pot and see what happens to him upstairs and sort of just go at this. I think that might be the best idea. And do I feel good about it? Nah. <laughs> no, I do not. I do not. However, I'm more interested in making sure this plant survives in the long term because, again, I've never seen another one do this. I've never seen another one do this. So I think that's the most important thing we could do for this plant right now is to essentially increase its chances of survival. So because I know you'll love it and hopefully we're not too far away, I now have a choice of where I cut this plant. I will try and bring it to you because I know we all love to learn. Right. Excuse me for being so close to the camera. Is it even going to focus? Yes. Right. So we have the root system here, which I'm sure you can agree is it's fine. Honestly, there is some darkness somewhere in the center of it, but honestly, it's old substrate. It's not rot. So we have that. And then we have basically all of this here. We have the bit where the leaf is coming off. It's dying, but we have really good aerial up here. A lot of it has unfortunately adhered to the pole. Not the best for this situation because I will have to cut it out. But in the interest of saving it, I, th I think we should propagate this. So I don't fully know where I'm going to cut yet. I almost want to say I will cut maybe here. Can you see that? Yeah, maybe about here to preserve the top. Um, and then maybe a couple of chunks on the way down. And then cut it to about here on the bottom and just leave this to grow back. And this will probably get potted back up into the pot, put upstairs. Hopefully it will live in order to propagate the top, I probably will have to cut this big boy off because it's not going to stand in a pot. It's going to be very brittle. And if someone knocks it, it's going to fly out of the pot on the shelf, right? So unfortunately, this boy's probably got to go. But remember, it's all in the interest of keeping him alive in the long run because I would love to actually start passing him down to you guys because I think a lot of people quite like this guy. And being that, I mean, I'm not saying there's only one in the world or anything, guys. I'm just saying I don't hear about people having it, um, this sort of mutation that's going on. So I think it'd be quite nice to start passing it around, don't you? I mean, when I say I, th there is just this plant, I literally mean there is just this plant. I don't have anything else that's ever done this. When I first got this, if any of you remember, I think I said, oh, this is throwing out something weird. And then I think I came back again a couple of months later going, oh, it's still doing it. And then it's just, it's an accepted thing that this plant always does this. It doesn't have a nice, you know, the lobes aren't like neatly together. They're very much like that. So let's preserve him, shall we? So I think what I'm going to do, and I don't know if I can zoom you in. No, probably not. I think what I'm going to have to do is try and sort of cut him out of the, uh, the pole a little bit before I decide what I want to do. I'd like to see him properly before I do any of that. So we're going to do that and I will take another question because this might be a little bit of open heart surgery here. Y'all have been asking to be about this seller scammer video and I agree. I said it'd be out in January. I said it'd be out in January and you're probably getting real suspicious as to why it's not out. Let me tell you now, there is no reason why it's not out other than Ben still has not got me all of the conversations and all of the footage. And I must have asked him, and I am dropping you in it, Ben. I must have asked him three times a week for what, a month? So if everyone in the comment section now could tell Ben to prepare the scammer info for me to go through for you, 
In other words, screenshots, all the things that I need from him. That would be great. And y'all can have your scammer video. It's literally because he hasn't done it. And if you didn't know, if you're thinking, why does Ben have to do it? I never spoke to this person. The All of the shop logistics there was done through Ben. So Ben has handled the entire thing from start to finish. That's why we need Ben. So if y'all could pester Ben in the comments, because he does read my comments and he's going to be thinking, what have they said about me? Please tell him to prepare the video. And I promise you, y'all can have it. I'll reiterate what I said about it in the last video, which is if I do the video, I'm probably not going to be reporting. I will just sit somewhere in front of a plant and talk about it because it's important that I get the information accurate because it's somebody's reputation that I'm essentially throwing under the bus. So I need to make sure I get everything right and I don't want to misconstrue something or be busy doing something and not think about, you know, like stringing my sentences together properly when it matters. So if that's not something you're into, that's fine. I'm sure someone will just give you like the short version of it. But when I do make that video, that is essentially how it's going to be done. So it's not going to be done like in this format. I'll have to just do it with a different format. I could do it in front of a green screen. That might actually be quite handy, to be honest. Something like that anyway. Not that I'm going for big production quality. It's just that's the easiest way I can present you the information at the same time. I will try that out at some point. Sorry, these scissors... They don't, they don't work. They don't work. Right, next question. Uh, find a YouTube channel. Yeah, right. So somebody asked me, like, what do you think about starting up a planned YouTube channel now? Is it too late? Now then, now then, now then, now then. That's a tricky question. That's a really tricky question. And I feel like I've answered it periodically over the last three years. And obviously my answer probably changes based on my feelings about my own, what I say of other people's, you know, is it the pandemic or not? Because that was a big thing. It is tough that, and I think you shouldn't really start a channel with just the idea of making money out of it because I think you might be disappointed. That's not to say you can't at all, but people have a really big misconception about how much money people make through doing this. Honestly, do you remember how everyone thought I was a millionaire and I'm not? Now I understand you see all this behind me, but this is a result of time and propagation, a lot of it. I have humongous overheads that none of you would like to experience. Do you know what I mean? Like I bought these before the pandemic where they weren't high priced. So then they became really high value. Obviously it's gone back down now. Like you have to disregard this when it comes to anything like that. And in terms of YouTube, again, I think because we see all these like ridiculously rich YouTubers like on, you know, the main platforms, like you've got Jake Paul and all of that, right? All of that. And we think, oh my God, the, the YouTubers have a lot of money. And it's like, mm, the top 10% probably do. The rest of us probably have enough to make a living. And I'm not knocking that. I'm not being ungrateful for that. What I'm trying to get at is certainly, <laughs> I'm going to show my age here, but kids today think that they can become millionaires on social media and you can right and you can make a crack in living and I'm not knocking it because one it's making me my living and two there's never been a better time for having a career online the amount of things you can do is ridiculous to be honest so I'm I'm pro that for everybody if you want to do it but all I'm really getting at there is manage your expectations quite a bit don't go into something thinking, right, well, I need to do this. I need to grow and I need to have this many followers. Do it because you kind of want to. And if if you want to start a channel for, for any reason, see if you like it. Because the reality of having a YouTube channel, I think it can be, it can seem in the same way as the money, it can seem very romanticized about what it's like. Because all you see is me or somebody else plant or not doesn't matter on your tv screen and then you see all these comments and all these likes and it's all like a big thing and then you think oh my god wow it must be great it's not there's no one here right now i'm talking to a metaphorical person behind a camera right there's no people forget that sometimes because i meet people here and there if someone recognized me which is very rare by the way it's happened like five times in three years but people forget that like i don't know people i'm not necessarily good with people. It's not like I'm talking to a big audience. I'm talking to a camera lens right now in an empty room with nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, and that's good because that gives you a really, um, like easy entry to it. If you're someone that's quite shy, cause I mean, I'm a software engineer, so you can probably tell what I think about being shy and being out there. Spider alert, I'm an introvert, but it can really help you get out of your shell that way because that's all you've got to contend with. If you can speak to a camera, you're all right. Right. But I don't think anyone should go into it with like, oh, am I going to gain all the following? We're going to make money because no one can really tell you that, to be honest. It's not really a question any of us can answer, because I think 
and I know <laughs> I'm going to say something, and I know all plant YouTubers are actually really feeling it, but I don't think anyone said it. Plant YouTube is not doing the best at the minute. It's stable, don't get me wrong. It's not like on a downturn, but things are just not as popping as they were, and it is more symptomatic of like the plant market and the way people buy plants and everything has changed. You know, people aren't necessarily buying plants in the same way they were and yada, yada, yada. But there, there is a bit of a plateau, could you say, at the minute for a lot of us on YouTube. I know I'm feeling it. Every, I think everyone's feeling it. I can tell. I can always tell. It's it's easier from one YouTuber to tell from another YouTuber, if that makes sense, um, than it is for you at home. So I, I wouldn't want anybody, oh, I've snapped a root. How, where's that even come from? There's a root coming from here and I don't even know if I pull it. Oh no, it's all fluffy at the end. So yeah, I, I wouldn't come in with any expectations because it, it's it's too difficult. And a lot of getting somewhere on the internet is like right place, right time. And I don't even know under what circumstance I'd be here if it wasn't for, let's face it, Jenna Marbles. If you don't know, Jenna Marbles, a uh, big YouTuber. She's since left the platform. She, she shouted me out a couple of times. I was sort of growing slowly without that, but she shouted me out not once but twice, I think, and obviously that massively helped. Is it the very reason I exist on YouTube? No, obviously I existed before and I've worked hard, but what I'm saying is a lot of that was being in the right place at the right time. There's nothing that necessarily makes me special in any way. A lot of it is algorithms, it's time of year, it's did you get the title, did you did you do the things? that the, None of us know what the algorithm is, by the way. Um, I don't know how many people know that. It's not something that we know how it works. We just work here. We don't know that. And that's, that's tough, by the way. So I would, I would hate for someone to go into this trying to rely on it because, oh, you don't know your boss. You're never going to speak to them. You don't know how much you're going to get paid each month. And it depends on all these factors that I don't understand. I don't look at my analytics because one, it depresses me because I don't want to, I don't want to think of this like that. And I don't understand it anyway. There's so many things that affect what you earn or how well you do or how much things are viewed. And personally, I don't understand it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's so many YouTubers that will have a good handle on that and they can probably tell you. And you probably find YouTube videos explaining it to you. I've just never really endeavored to look because I don't want it to take over like that. I don't want to lie awake thinking about numbers. And I don't want to because I've done it before. Not with this channel, by the way. It was actually with uh, my old gaming channel. It used to really stress me out that. Um, so I, I tend not to look at numbers. I don't, I don't like to. I don't like to at all. My family and friends look at numbers more than I do. And sometimes they'll say, oh, did you know? And I'm like, no, I haven't looked. You know what I mean? So you've got to think like what you want out of it. Because if it's just to grow on the internet, honestly, I, I would honestly say TikTok's probably easier than YouTube. I would say that YouTube is the hardest platform to grow on. And what I'm about to say is not meant to offend anybody at all. It's just sort of logical. I think YouTube is the hardest platform to grow on. Yay, we got there. Because you have to retain people's attention for a hell of a long time. It is not like a TikTok. So a TikTok's what? 15, 30, 30 60 seconds. I think you can go to 10 minutes now. But you get my point. Like, you, it doesn't have to have, the content doesn't have to have as much substance. It can just be something short and funny. You don't have to have people's attention span that long. You need a heart button. That's it. It's it's just so different to YouTube. YouTube, the standard is like the bar to fill is so high. It's so high. It's tough. And I'm not trying to put anybody off. It's just more, if you want to grow your business or you want to grow yourself as a brand or whatever you want to do on the internet, honestly, as someone that should have done this and hasn't, you should probably look into the different platforms and what they might do for you. You might find, hey, Instagram is just like, it's amazing for me and my business or me as a hobbyist or a creator or whatever you want to do. That's brilliant. Or you might find, hey, I'm really happy on TikTok. TikTok is just all about me. I really vibe with it. That's what I want to do. Um, or you might find, again, YouTube. Or you might find it's a blog or a podcast. Like, there's so many different ways of doing this. Don't don't be tunnel visioned and thinking it's just YouTube. It's not. YouTube makes you money. I assume Instagram makes you money. I don't know. I've never been paid for a post or anything. I've never been sponsored. I don't know if that's the only way to make money on Instagram. TikTok, again, I don't know. I don't really use it. I'd like to, but I don't at the moment. So I don't really know. I can't speak for in terms of like an actual earning on these platforms. It's just different things will work for different people. And it is still very, very, very much glamorized, guys. It's very much glamorized because a lot of people think that you just, I mean, it depends what you do, don't get me wrong. But in the case of YouTube, a lot of people think that no matter what YouTuber you are, you just rock up, turn the camera on, turn it off, and then it appears on the internet. 
and you know, like your job's really easy. Like, no, like I filmed a video just before. I spent two days planning it. One of those days was finding plants and everything else. I then wrote up a plan for it as to what I was going to discuss and why I made sure it makes sense, made sure I included everything. I then spent extra time filming it because essentially the camera wasn't on. So I spent about an hour and a bit filming it. I've then probably got to spend four to five hours editing it to make it as nice as I want it. Then I've got to upload it and get it out. It, it just one video is, is a little bit of work. And if you're doing them in bulk and you're doing more videos, then you have the times up by however, however many you're doing. Um, and that's different for everybody. Don't get me wrong. Let's me start and stop this because I know exactly how this goes. This goes to the point where I lose my content. So anyway, I'm, I'm rambling, I'm rambling. It, it is work, it's not, um, it's not glamorous and it's not without its work and that's, that's just kind of how it is. But I'm not discouraging it, I'm just saying I, I can't really give you advice on whether to, whether it's too late in terms of like plan boom, making money because I'm not in a position to tell you, not really, because I'm already in a place where I'm sort of established, but I say established, that makes me sound like I'm trying to say something else. I'm not. I'm just, I'm finding a way of saying like I'm not starting fresh. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, don't, don't get tunnel visioned into just YouTube. Try other platforms because I know that um, TikTok is like the place to be. I know that, someone said this the other day, I know that TikTok followers and like YouTube subscribers, they're not, they don't equate. So when you say your favorite TikToker with like 13 million followers, I'm pretty sure that about 10 million followers on TikTok equates to 100,000 followers on YouTube. And that's just due to how, it, it's just how it works. It's how easy it is to get a follow on TikTok versus how hard it is to get a subscription on YouTube. So bear that in mind when you see someone with 10 million followers, it doesn't necessarily equate to a lot of earning depending on how they actually make their money. There's so much to consider. But honestly, if you're just... If you're wanting to do it on YouTube, all I can say is you're probably gonna grind. You're probably gonna grind. As soon as any sector gets saturated, there's a million of them and you can't get anywhere really. And I say this with some experience of my gaming channel. I started my gaming channel, it doesn't exist anymore. There's no point looking for it. In, ooh, 2012, 2011, maybe something like that and it was it boomed straight away and I got like 500 subs in like a month that's quick by the way it's reasonably quick for a channel you're doing very well if you do that like very very well and it kept growing but I was in university I had to stop because my university was not doing well so then I sort of stopped and did that and then I came back to it in 2017 18 something like that and impossible because in terms of people playing games on the internet, due to the likes of PewDiePie, Markiplier, um, Jacksepticeye, all, all of those, it was so saturated because everyone's done it and then you can't, you can't break through it. It's, it's, well, saturated, isn't it? I don't know if the plant world is like that. I know it's definitely bigger than what it was. And that's another thing, guys. When I got into it, I remember before I started my channel, I was looking at other YouTube channels at the time because obviously I was interested in it and there wasn't that many, if I'm honest. It's, it's one of those things it's right place, right time with so many things on the internet, I can't even tell you. And if you'd, if you'd asked me like three years ago, would, would you ever even get anywhere to the point where you can earn a living off it? I would laugh at you because of my experience with the other channel. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not trying to talk anyone out of it or be negative in any way. It's just, I want to give you a realistic picture of it because not enough people do. And I don't like people that sit there with millions of subscribers and either say, oh, you can definitely do it, or no, nah, you can't, don't even bother. You can't, you can't, you can't reduce it to that. There's so many things that you have to consider. And even then, one person can come along and break all the rules and just absolutely just break through it all. Do you know what I mean? My, my ultimate advice is do it if you really think you'll have fun doing it. And the second it isn't fun, stop I think definitely there's points in 2020 where definitely in 2021 actually in in some ways more than 2020 this wasn't that fun for me 2021 I was completely burnt out from 2020 everyone knows 2020 was a rough ass year for me <laughs> like I think everyone alive came for me I had the documentary I had all kinds of shit 2021 wasn't much better but I was really really burnt out obviously 2022 has come along it hasn't been amazing for me I've had other problems i.e the horse and stuff um, and I'm really hoping that this year is better. But like I had to weigh up that and I knew that I had a goal here and that was this place. I wanted this place to be something. So that kind of kept me going through 2020. Um, but just just be careful 
And one last piece of advice before I move on is this. Anything, no matter how much you love it, can become just work to you. And please, please, please consider that. And I have no shame in telling you that occasionally that's happened to me here with this shop. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It kind of just depends on the month I'm having. Sometimes this place really feels like work and making videos really feels like work. And there's not many creators that'll tell you this, to be honest, because it just makes us look bad, because it makes us look ungrateful. But there are times when this really feels like work, but there are times when it feels brilliant. And that can vary as well when you're on the platform. So just be careful because it could mean that the thing you love, whether it's plants, whether it's gaming, whether it's knitting, whether it's, I don't know, I'm running out of ideas, you know, that can become work for you if you really want to make it your thing. So just honestly, just go away, have a tinkle, look on the different platforms, think like, what do I vibe with? What do I don't? If you've never seen TikTok before, don't just assume you hate it. Load it up, have a look, spend a couple of hours on there. If you really can't stand the sight of it, now you know, there's an avenue closed, you're fine. Do you know what I mean? Just take a bit more consideration, but don't don't be tunnel visioned in any sense, whether it's like a plant channel or if I do a plant channel, I have to make it or do I have to just do TikTok? Do I have to do all the platforms? Oh my God, I don't like TikTok. I don't want to do it. Do you know what I mean? Don't feel like you've got to be rigid in structure. Just do kind of, sounds so generic at the end of it all, doesn't it? I've said all of that at the end of it. I'm like, just do what's best for you. You know what I mean? I just feel like a lot of people don't talk enough about this sort of thing. And a lot of us are scared to. Um, I know I have been at times. There's, there's so many times I've wanted to just stand here and go, guys, I'm not feeling it this month. I, I can't. I'm drained. I don't feel inspired. I've For the longest time now, I've had almost like a writer's block in terms of like video creation and I've tried so hard to get out of it I think I'm coming out of it now I think obviously a lot of it's just stuff in my personal life and that's you know this is just a symptom of that but it gets like that sometimes it's the same as any other job please don't be enamored to think it's you know it's all sunshine and rainbows because not just like everything and I'm not saying you can't do something that you love in it and you not find enjoyment in it anymore it's just it's a side of it that no one bothers to tell you. I'm kind of giving you the bits that the other people don't. So if the other people have given you a rosy view, I'm not trying to give you the worst view. I just want to make sure you have all of the views. Does that make sense? All of the views, that's what we want here. So, right. I think that's that covered. So my short answer is, I can't really answer it for you. <laughs> Thank you, Kaylee. That's very useful. That's very useful, Kaylee. Thank you for gracing my screen with a load of crap. Anyway, we've got this out. I think I'm going to start cutting it and I, I'm not going to make too many cuts here. So I'm going to give this top one the best chance. And no, I can't take it up to the camera really, guys. Sorry. Right. So we've got this one here that I'm now going to separate first and then we'll do some other cuts. I might do just one more and then leave that stump and pop the stump. This is going to look terrible, but I'll just have to tag it up. What did I say? Telegram what? Telegram troll. Oh, I literally, I, I was like, Telegram, what? This is 2023. Right, Telegram troll. Really quickly, a few people are like, yo, are you, why are you like commenting like weird things to us in the comments? Um, I, I think it's just a spam bot that rocks up sometimes. I get two types of spam bot on my channel. One is, oh, why don't you invest in this strange man that no one's definitely heard of? I get them a lot and I try to tackle them when I can. The other one that started coming in is someone that looks like me going, hi, telegram me, oh, and all of that sort of shit. Uh, that's not me. Um, I wouldn't go on like that anyway. And also, it, it's just not me. So basically, if you see it, report it. It should probably just say like, WhatsApp me or something like that. It's not me, guys. I'm really sorry. If you think that you've had like a semi notification that I've like commented on you and it's not there anymore, it probably wasn't me and I've probably deleted it. So just to let you know, because a few people are asking, yo, what, what is this? It's just some weird human on the internet. I don't know what they're trying to get out of it either, by the way. Um, if someone's going to pretend to be me, well, ultimately, it'll be for money, won't it? I mean, why else? What's in it for anybody if it's not for money? So I don't know if they'll be trying to, like, say you've won a competition. I don't, I don't know. I literally don't know. Just please ignore them. Or just have fun with them, I suppose you could. Before I get to deleting them, you're welcome to have fun with them if you like. I have no problem with that if you uh, decide to get chatting to them. Um, that could be quite fun, actually. I might leave one thread just to do that. As long as someone does say, like, this isn't them, by the way, so everyone knows. Like, you know, this isn't them, but let's have a joke. I'd, I'd like to see how the bots respond, to be honest. That could be fun. Oh my God, should I respond to it? Next time it comes up, right? That's what I'm going to do. Next time it comes up, I'm going to respond to it as if I'm not me. 
and then we'll just see what the bot does. But yeah, oh, I bet it doesn't happen now. Please, Telegram bots, come, 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 come to me, talk to me. So we'll do that, I think. I might start having a bit more fun with that, because why not? They're spamming my content, I'll spam theirs. That's the war. That didn't sound very good, it sounded like a gargle. A bit guttural, didn't it? So we've got that undone. Gosh, this is taking a long time today, isn't it? I might not even get through that other plant, by the way. I might, if I just chop, 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 then we'll be all right. I'm gonna cut this one here. There's not really a rule here. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's not really a rule. Oh, is that a root or is it a... Yeah, it's a root, mm, okay. I might leave that as it is, even though there's a lot on it. Just, I just I don't want to do too much, you know? Oh, hello, I don't think we're gonna do that. I don't know if I wanna half it. See, if Ben saw this, he'd be like, why aren't you cutting that again? But I'm not going to, I'm just gonna leave them like that and I'm gonna label them. I am gonna cut this off, guys, really sorry. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? Look how nice he is. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Oh, what a shame. Again, though, I was just to put my money where my mouth is, I have touched it with grubby hands. But there is literally, and I really do mean it when I say I've had grubby hands on here, but there's nothing on it. Is that going to focus? There's just, there's nothing on it. There's nothing on it. It's completely immaculate. Again, I, I've had, like, just shit on my gloves. So if you see bits, that is honestly what it is. There is just, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, this, there's nothing. So that's that. Right, I'm going to pop him down and uh, RIP. But he will come back and hopefully he will come back times three. Is that three? Yes. For some reason, my brain was like, that's four. Anyone do that? Or is it just me? Right, let's get these into pots real quick. I'm probably going to put him back in pond, even the props. I might do that in lecker. You know what, I might cut that bit again. Let's get this one in a pot and I'll do it in pawn and then we'll see. I don't know, I'm, I'm winging it. I'm, I'm winging it, guys, I'm really winging it. It's probably not the best idea, but we're doing it. Very gently coil it, because I end up doing this, I end up snapping the bloody things, right. And if they don't do well, I will assume fault and I will change it to lecker. But at the end of the day, this has grown in pawn and it, it was doing well. And we will label them up either at the end or itchy. After I finish filming. I don't like this, you know, I really don't like it. I don't like it. I'll just show you what my issue is. This is terrifying, right? Can you see this? Please focus on me. Why, why? Be, be here, be here, be present. There we go. So, mm, I don't know what you would do. I'm thinking of cutting it sort of here and just generally trying to avoid it all. I think I can if I cut it here. Oh Lord, pray for me guys, pray for me. Uh. Oh, okay. So I've cut it here, like that. So these should survive, should survive. And I think I will lecker these. I will do it off camera just because the lecker isn't here, no other reason. So I will actually leave them and I will do them just after. So let me just get this in here. I realize this is all grubby and nasty, but I can't work in this shop and not have a degree of grubbiness and nastiness. It's uh, not very Instagrammy up in here. When I get everything in the house sorted, then maybe, maybe it'd be different. I might try my hand at being actually aesthetic for once, but until that time, you get chaos and dirt, as it should be. Who is potting things up aesthetically at home? Please tell me that, please tell me that. Who is doing that? I mean, if you're a YouTuber and you manage to do that, props to you, honestly, props to you. I tried it, I did my best. I obviously, again, I could do a lot more in the house than I could here, but it's not the easiest. I don't like what I've just done at all. Maybe I put too much in to get some out. I, I'm not happy with that at all. It, I, I do kind of almost think this pot's a bit small. And you know what it is, I think as well. I can't put the this where I wanted to because it doesn't give the roots enough room. So put it at the side. I don't know where it was originally either, but ooh. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like this is very rooty up top and it shouldn't be. Remember, if it dies, we're okay. Well, we're not okay. These might also die, but let it be known that I have one or two photos of this plant in its prime and we will always remember it. I'll push it down a bit. Hopefully it doesn't kill it. I'm not a fan of pushing substrate down. You shouldn't, by the way. <laughs> My dad's done this a few times, but he's potted plants and, oh bless him, he used like compost with like virtually no drainage in it. And he kept putting it in and putting it in and just pounding it down. And needless to say, the plant looked hideous. <laughs> it had like no oxygen to the roots. Cause that's why we do it, by the way. That's why we have drainage and gaps in the soil. You want it looser and you want it gappy underneath so that the, the roots can get oxygen. Not a lot of people know that roots need oxygen. 
it's, it's also a large reason why they rot, because they can't get oxygen. So do be careful. That's why pollen sort of works so it doesn't, it just depends on the plant and how it's feeling and everything. It's not, it's not a, a one, one, one case scenario. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. You know what I mean? Anyway. Oh, you know what? That kind of brings me into a question someone asked about, like, why do you use lecker a lot in the shop? And I've probably answered this before a lot. Literally, by the way, guys, I'm just, I'm cutting down this and I'm going to take off some extra um, internodal you know, just stem there. I'm just going to take it off. That's all I'm doing. This is not glam in any way, shape or form. If you want to know how I propagate this, the answer is very simple. I'm going to cut in between these gaps where all the aerials are. Even though that does not have anything coming off the node, I'm still going to do it um, because hopefully it will grow something. There is a little bud, so we'll see. So I use lecker at the shop because it is a soilless substrate, so no soil basically. It's not very messy, although it is very messy when it's on the floor and you slip on it. Not good, not good. But it's not very messy in terms of repotting plants and stuff like that. The other reason I use it is so that when I send plants to other countries, I don't have to do anything aggressive to the roots in order to then have them okay to send. So for example, when you get something from Indonesia or Thailand, the rehabilitation process is so bad because these plants were grown in soil or coir or whatever. They've been pulled from that. I've seen them do it and it's, it's harrowing to watch, but they get toothbrushes or scrubbers and they actually scrub the root up and down, up and down, up and down. It's why a lot of times you get something with a root and you know how you have like, I actually don't know the proper name for them, but you have like a primary and like secondary root. Sorry, I know they've got names. This is just me being dumb but you have like this root and then you have little ones coming off. A lot of the time you lose the little ones coming off and it's because they're literally, and I mean literally, they are being scrubbed, proper scrubbed to get every little morsel of coir off the root. Once that is done, they're then dipped in, I can't remember what the combo of chemicals is, but they're then dipped in chemicals to kill anything on there. But the killing anything on there can sometimes mean semi-killing the root. Not only that, but they're normally left out sometimes for even most of a day, two days before they're even put in moss and potted up. Or they're sent bare root and they're wrapped in tissue paper, which is way worse because the tissue paper dries out really fast. So what basically happens is the roots are damaged, scrubbed within an inch of their life. So all the coating on the root is damaged anyway. And they are probably dried out to high heaven by the time you get them regardless of how quickly they've gone in the packaging. It's just how it is. And that's what gives you a horrific rehab time because a lot of the damage on the plant, you can't even see it because it's on the root. So you do get tons of leaves dropping up. You get them yellowing. You just get them wilting and going horrible. It's just, it's a bad time for the plant. So I tend to use Lekka because essentially when the roots come out, they haven't been scrubbed. They've never had soil on them. So they're going to pass any test very quickly because I haven't had to do aggressive treatments. And that's what I started doing in, I feel like late 2019, 2020 type thing, because it was just all around best for the plant. It doesn't have to undergo any stress. The only stress it gets is the humidity change from this unit to age of your house or just stress going from, obviously it is being unpotted at the end of the day. It is coming out of liquor and it's going in a bag and with shipping gel on and it's sent to you guys. So obviously that's inevitably going to cause stress and you can't avoid that stress, by the way. You just like shipping from anywhere, even when you buy something in a pot, you're going to get that. But in terms of chemicals and treating roots and stuff like that and, and pests and invasive species of bugs and all sorts of things in different countries to do lecker, brilliant, just brilliant. And there's no problems with it. So that is why I use it. But it does have the drawback of being rather noisy on occasion for uh, these videos, I would say. I might leave that, you know. I might leave that. These roots are a bit shit. I might leave that. I'm going to put a little something in it, but I am actually going to leave that just for now. I just don't want to lose it, you know. But yeah, that, that's basically it. That's why I use it. I do find certain plants grow better in it than others. And yes, I know I'm supposed to be doing a video on it. I know, I know, it's in the works, it's in the works. But I find that Anthurium do really well in Lekka. Monstera, yeah, actually. Um, but Anthurium probably do the best. Sorry, I'm gonna do some really bad, so just don't look, just look away from the screen. But I'm literally wedging this in, despite the fact it's probably going through the root system. Because, I don't know, I'm just doing it. But all this here, I think I'll trim it now, actually. It's dead, it's gone, um, it's gone too long without water up there. That one, I think, is alive. I'm probably gonna trim it anyway, because yellow. So that's why I use it, guys. Pond, similar. 
Um, I started using it, obviously, when I started using the self-watering pots from Lechuza. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. In a house, I would use it over Lekka just because, well, I'll go into it when I do the video, but it, sometimes I do use Pon and certain plants love it, certain plants hate it. It's not a one-size-fits-all solution. That's, that's what I wanted to say earlier on. That's what I want to say earlier on. It's not one size fits all. Damn it. Now, now I've realized. Uh, restock on the website. Oh, someone asked for that. It's soon. It's soon. But I, I don't want to say because I don't know when I'm putting this one out, when I'm putting the other one I filmed out today out. I think I'm going to say it now because I think the other one needs more editing so it can't come out this week. I'm not going to have time. I think I'm doing a Valentine's Day sale. Just check the website and it will either have it on or not, I suppose. But I think at the moment that's what I'm going to be doing doing some deals, some discount codes. So please stay tuned for that. Best way you can follow that. I do tend to repost it on my Instagram, but the Rare Plant Shop does have an Instagram. So you can follow that. It is literally the Rare Plant Shop, or one word. So if you're interested in some of that, that's fine. A few people have been asking me about the uh, Blue Oily Boy, the Microsorum from my last video. I, it's actually in here. If I grab him. Because a few people were like, oh my God, I really want one. Where do I get one? I've, I've literally got some that I got in before Christmas that they're actually ready to go now. I've had them in quite a bit. But basically this boy that you will have seen in hopefully maybe the last video, I have some of him. They're much larger, but they're not as blue. I'll pick one up for you now. They're going to be there, I think. They will be there, like it's some kind of party. Let me just grab one real quick. And they are kind of all a bit different, but they are... Let's see, grab a nice bushy one. Yeah, they are not as blue, but they will blue up. It's just, you know, how they've been grown over there. When I got mine, it wasn't that blue, but can you see it is blue? Hopefully you can on here. Literally, you've got that weird oiliness of it. Um, yeah, it depends on the leaf. Like there's blue coming through there. I think it just depends on the condition. See, it just looks, that's the best way I can describe it. It's like oil slick, isn't it? But yeah, you can actually see them in a tray back here. I have a few. I don't think I have a ton. Yeah, probably about 12 to 15 of them, I think. So they're all good to go. They're quite nice. They've been grown in moss. So they should be very, very nice. I haven't really touched them too much. I've kind of left them because you don't want to fuck with the fern. You know what I mean? So yeah, I have some of those. Among other things, can't tell you exactly what they are as of this. But with any look, they might actually be out as this video goes live. But I'm literally saying all this, guys, without of. Like when, when I'm saying this, I haven't planned any of it. So I do know, but just let the Instagram and the website be your guide. Okay, I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to do these off camera because I need to label them. It's very, very important to get labeled. I will ask Ben where is the best place to put them because we have kind of like high value sections in the shop and we like to keep things in certain places. I will put these up. I do have some, I have more than one spare node, don't I? Yes, oh God. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for watching this repot with me. I should have a really nice video for you next week that is going to take me a little bit to edit, but I'm quite excited to put it together. It's a bit of an update of an older video, so I'm looking forward to that. And if you've got any other video requests for me, of course, as always, you can leave them in the comments. You can leave them on my Instagram, really wherever you like. Comment section is quite an easy place to look, of course. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that you enjoy the content that I make. And if you'd like to subscribe and you haven't already, please feel free to do that because I would love to have you as part of the family. That's it for this week's video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.